Hello and welcome to MB Tech. My name is Matthew Bingham and today we'll be going over a type of print that I've been wanting to do, I've been trying to do for a long time. Um, I had issues when I had a different type of printer. Um, I just got the Ender 3 Pro. I went through some upgrades on it and stuff like that. And I just wanted to show you that it is possible to print the uh, 3D Lab print. It is possible to print from the G-Code files for the 3D Lab print um, airplanes. Um, I've been wanting to build one because I do a lot of stuff with RC and I wanted to create one of these planes so I was able to finally get it to work and I got it to work properly. I had to do a couple things so I thought I'd go over those a uh, couple of things that I had to do to make sure that it worked properly. Show you what I had in the beginning and then show you what the final product was um, on this. Um, I did use a, uh, a very knowledgeable person uh, that has some calibration tools out there. He's, uh, he does teaching tech on um, YouTube. Um, I'll have a link to his uh, site, but I also have the, uh, the, the web pages that he has as well for printer calibration that really helped me to get this fine-tuned. And then I'll show you what I had to do within the G-code to make it work properly for me. It may not work for you. It may work for you, but these are some things I had to do that got to work for me. I was to the point where I was ready to just not even you know print anymore because <laughs> i was so frustrated with all the stringing and all the stuff that i had with uh issues and stuff like that but i got those completely taken care of everything's printing fine now i've actually printed the whole plane now it's just time to put it together but i thought i'd go through some of those uh settings that i ne did need to do and some of the changes that i had to make to the g code before i actually printed it out um so first off i'd like to go to the uh, teaching tech uh, 3d printer calibration um on that uh you can see I'm actually on the retraction tuning. And the biggest thing for the retraction tuning is, is we need to make sure that we have that proper setting on there. Um, as you can see, there's these different stacks. And then these different stacks will have different distances in millimeters that you want to set these at. Um, so for example, I created a one for the, the clear. And as you can see, this is what it is. I mean, I know it's can't really see it that well. I'll try to get some uh, better pictures of it. Um, and on this one here, I have the markings that I had it set for four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Um, so here you would do nine, eight, seven. You, you get the you get the picture. But that's what I did for the different ones. And then um, on mine, I was able to get up to four had strings. Five did not, or very little, and then six completely clean. Um, so on there. So for that, that would be my retraction distance that I would make uh, settings for uh, within the actual G code itself um, from there. So first you'd go here after you have your printer set up, uh, create this one for your printer. Like I said, with a nine eight seven six five four uh, three two one. So here would be seven six five four. Um, and then you would download the G code and you'd run it and you'd get a print, like I said, very similar to that clear one that I showed you with the different stacks. Um, that would determine your uh, retraction. The next biggest thing that you need to uh, get is the temperature tuning. And this is very important because the setting was very high on the G code that was actually in the uh, uh, 3D lab print for my P51 Mustang that I was printing out. Um, so go to your temperature tuning. And then in here, what you're going to want to do, basically the same thing. It's a stack with some little bridges and stuff like that. And you'll get the stringing and all our stuff. Um, so for here, uh, I actually had different settings for that as well. And I've got my bridge right here. I know it's probably hard to see. I'll try to get it as close as I can to that. But then I had my different settings on there as well. Um, and you can see where the stringing stops. And it's actually on the 195 um, setting there. So basically I had... Uh, 195 is the bottom, 200, 205, 210, and 250. Um, so on this one here, I did this stack this way, downloaded the G code, printed it out, and, and saw what I had, and I could see the different you know, increments, as like I said on there, you can see the different stringing that was actually uh, in place. Like I said, I'm sorry if this is out of focus, but just wanted you guys to see that. Um, and put that uh, also made the changes in the G code uh, for that. And then once I did that, I had some beautiful prints. Um, for example, like here's one of the bigger parts of the wing. I mean, you can see through it's translucent. It's, it's, it's really cool. There's no stringing 
on the inside at all uh, for this. Whereas if you look at one of my earlier prints I did in red, I mean, I had complete see-through. I had stringing. I mean, you can see it's like hairy. Um, all sorts of stuff. And then uh, I had these bubbles and these just, it did not look good. And I had stringing on the inside. Uh, just did not like it at all. And, and then once I was able to get these settings set up properly, um, I, was, I was getting immaculate prints. And, you know, like I said, I ended up printing the whole thing out in uh, translucent or clear. And, uh, you know, it looks really good. You know, this one here is an example of a, a servo in the wing. Um, so I mean, I've already got the servo in. And I'm, like I said, I'm just ready to glue these things together and get myself my, my P51 all set up. Um, totally excited about this. Like I said, I've been working on this for, for weeks and stuff like that. And I finally have got it to the point where I, I'm ready to put it together. Um, so after you do that, uh, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need a product, uh, that you can go and you can do, uh, changes and search through the text file itself. Um, I'm going to show you one that I use. It's called notepad plus plus. And in here, uh, basically we have the original, uh, code that was actually with the, the P51 that, that I downloaded and paid for at 3d, uh, lab print. Um, and, uh, basically within here. Uh, I did a search for the uh, temperature uh, point. Um, and, and, and as you can see uh, on the left here, here's the original. So you got it. They had it set to 230. Well, you know, 230 on here, you can see it's really stringy. And I was, that's why I was getting all the strings in my prints and stuff like that. So I changed this to the one where I had no strings. So that was where I set the temperature to 195. Uh, 60 is the bed temperature. Uh, the actual extruder end point or the hot end is the 195. So I made that change. Uh, the next thing that is the, the, the biggest change is the, uh, you know, once again, we've got to put the temperature here and they had it set at 230. We're going to set it to 195. Uh, and then here on the extruder, they actually have it at 0.8 and then a feet of 1,800. Now this 0.8, the reason why this is such a low number is that this is actually set up for a direct drive. Um, you know, your Prussia's and stuff like that, some different ones that do not have the Bowden tube. Um, so those, that's why the setting is, is like it is. So what you're going to do is since we, we determined that the best that we had was a, uh, a six when it came to our, our stringiness on this, um, you know, so we're setting that to six, uh, for, for that part of it. And then the, the 4,000. So this is the most important line here. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to actually want to take this. And you want to do a, a replace. So it's going to actually search this whole file over here. Um, so what you do is you'll, so what you're going to want to do here is find the uh, E.8 and then you're going to want to replace it with that six and then the F, F4000 and then say replace all of this. Okay, once those have all been replaced, your G code is done. Um, from there, you can upload it to whatever program uh, you use, or you can put it on an SD card and uh, put it in your 3D printer, then print it out. And then you will get, you know, the, the three parts of that wing printed out. And, uh, you know, hopefully they'll come out as good as they did for me. Like I said, they came out really good. Um, I was quite impressed with it. Um, so, I mean, here's a, you know, picture of the different pieces that I got here. Um, like I said, here's the clear ones that I've done, and these all came out really good. Um, that's what I wanted to show you about this. Like I said, you know, I was to the point where I didn't think it was going to work. I even bought the, uh, simplicity, uh, or simply 3d, um, thinking that that would help fix the issues that I was having and it did not. Um, so, I mean, I had all sorts of, uh, different things that I did try and uh, I was unable to get that to work other than using the G code, uh, changes that I made. Uh, a lot of this information or some of this information I got from CNC kitchen. I'll have that link in as well. He does an excellent job explaining a lot of the different stuff, you know, a little bit uh, hard, but I thought I'd just break this down uh, as easy as I could possibly. Um, again, this is uh, MB Tech, Matthew Bingham speaking. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope this helps you with your 3D prints and uh, makes you uh, as excited as I am about getting this printed out. And uh, now I can finally actually build this. Uh, thanks. Uh, if you would, please subscribe, like this video, and we will be back again with some more 3D printing tips. Thanks a lot and have a great day.